The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's your pal Dr. Sal, and your physician has prescribed you Stratera to start for attention deficit disorder. That's very exciting, but what are the seven most common side effects you may need to look out for within the first month of taking it? Let's take a look. What are the seven most likely side effects you might experience when starting on Stratera for the first time, aka Atomoxetin? Well, the manufacturer provided some insight into this in a study that they ran with uh, 269 people on the drug and another 263 taking a placebo or basically a sugar pill. Um, what was interesting with this study is that most of the other ADHD medicines were studied typically for four to five weeks. This one was done for a granddaddy long period of 10 weeks. So it should give you a pretty good impression of what you might experience within the first um, couple months of being on this um, ADHD medicine. Now, one thing to realize with Stratera is uh, it's basically atypical from all of the other ADHD medicines, which are psychostimulants. Stratera, or atomoxetin, is actually structurally looks more like an antidepressant, like an SSRI. And that might account for some of the differences in the side effect profile that you'll see compared to some of the big hitters, the common ones like uh, Dexedrin, Bifantin, Concerta, Adderall, etc. All right, so let's delve into it. I'm gonna start by creating a circular frequency chart. So please note this is not a pie chart. It's not gonna add up to 100% when I'm finished. Now, by far the most common um, side effect with this drug was dry mouth and that was a full 21% of people so 21% complain of dry mouth now there's something else a little a departure from what I typically do with all the other studies for the ADHD medicines this study seemed to be plagued with placebo problems people complaining of symptoms uh, whether they were on the drug or on the sugar tablets. There was so much of a placebo effect in, in this uh, trial that I'm actually going to list the placebo events of these different side effects um, at the same time so you could get a, a better impression of what the real incidence due to the drug was. So for dry mouth, 21% uh, of people complained of it, but 5% of people just on a sugar pill also complain of dry mouth so go figure the next uh, common side effect uh, that was complained of was in about 17 percent of people complained of headaches 17 percent however 17 percent of people taking a sugar pill also complain of headache so in my mind, that basically washes out. To me, the incidence of headache as a consequence of the Stratera basically was zero. Uh, the next big one, also at uh, 17%, whoops, was insomnia, not able to fall asleep. Now again, to put that in perspective, 8% of people just taking the placebo sugar pill also complain of insomnia. So to me, the real incidence of insomnia as a consequence of terror is more like 10%. Uh, next thing was um, nausea. Almost all drugs can cause nausea because if you've ever bitten into them and tasted what they taste like, you'd see why your stomach would reject them and rebel. And it's only got one way out. If it wants to get it out quickly, it has to make you feel nauseous and make you vomit. So nausea was complained about in 12% of users within the first uh, 10 weeks. Um, with sugar pills or placebo, it was 5%. Next big one, but compared to most of the stimulant medications, this is a tiny complaint, was a reduction in appetite. No appetite. 
for Stratera, this was only 10%. As you recall, if you've seen some of the other videos I did on some of the other ADHD medicines, uh, this is usually about a quarter to a third of, of users of the psychostimulants complain of no appetite, no desire to eat. Now, for placebo, there was also a further 3%. So the real incidence to me is about 7% of users complain of appetite depression. So Stratera, in some cases, is a really good choice if somebody has tried a spectrum of the psychostimulants. So they tried Adderall, they tried Dexedrine, they tried Vyvanse, they tried Bifentin, and each time, especially in kids, it completely kills their appetite or makes their personality like a robot. Stratera shines as an alternative because it's so atypical from all the other um, psychostimulants. Uh, the next big one in um, another 10% of users, another 10% was complaining of constipation. Can't poop. And for uh, sugar pill users, 4%. So to me, the real incidence is only about 6%. To me, that's not really a deal breaker. That's a minor um, hindrance. So this was the one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, oh, I promised you seven though. Oh, um, the, the last um, most frequent side effect, which is more unique to this class than any of the psychostimulants, was um, erectile dysfunction, and this might be a real deal breaker for guys. For females, obviously, there's no erection, so this doesn't matter. So that was at 7%. And this seemed to be a true effect because only 1% of people taking a placebo or sugar pill complain of the same thing. So that could be a deal breaker for a teenage male, for example, or tween. Uh, there's enough problems in life already without having to deal with that too. So these are the seven most common side effects you might want to look out for with Stratera. In my personal experience, uh, I have not found it to be as effective as an ADHD controlling agent compared to the psychostimulants, but it does have a role in cases of individuals complaining of severe appetite or nausea problems. And another one that's not on here is um, people with severe unmasking of anxiety which gets worse with most of the psychostimulants, then this tends to be uh, my next go-to. So uh, that's it for expectations um, taking Stratera. Thank you for watching so much and I'll have more intel and information and insider secrets for you in another week. Tune in. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.